This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. So we will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. For this is the day that the Lord has made, so we will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day, oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. And this is Psalm 118, verse 24. Flip to it and join in with me. Here's some added words. This is the way. This is the way that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, Jesus is the way that the Lord has made, so we will rejoice and be glad in him. Yes, this is the way, and this is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah, 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 well hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. Most popular word in the whole world. It is the same in every language. Did you know that? I don't care what language you are speaking. Hallelujah is hallelujah. <clears throat> Might have a little French accent or German accent or English accent, African accent. But the word is the same. God is, it's like he's preserved that special little word of praise to him, praise to Yah. Yah, the high God. Oh, I just love that. Well, y'all, it is August 30th. We only have two days left and we're going to March into September. That really spells fall, doesn't it? Mm. All right. On this August 30th, we are reading from Job 34. Job, Eof, 34, and reading through 36 quite a bit. <clears throat> now, these three friends of Job have had their turn speaking, and Job has answered. Now, Job... Job's finished. He's not going to say anymore. And now the very youngest, who hasn't spoken yet, he started speaking yesterday, didn't he? And so he is going to be speaking this whole reading. And his name is Elihu. We would say Elihu. Elihu. Right? I'm going to say Elihu. Elihu, this youngest of the of the three friends, further answered and said, Hear my words, you wise men. Give ear to me, you who have knowledge, for the ear tests words as the palate tastes food. Let us choose justice for ourselves. Let us know among ourselves what is good. For Job has said, I am righteous, but God has taken away my justice. Should I lie concerning my right? My wound is incurable, though I am without transgression. What man is like Job, <clears throat> who drinks scorn like water, who goes in company with the workers of iniquity and walks with wicked men? For he has said, it profits a man nothing that he should delight in God. Therefore, listen to me, you men of understanding. Far be it from God to do wickedness and from the Almighty to commit iniquity. 
for he repays man according to his work and makes man to find a reward according to his way. Surely God will never do wickedly, nor will the Almighty pervert justice. Who gave him charge over the earth, or who appointed him over the whole world? If he should set his heart on it, if he should gather to himself his spirit and his breath, all flesh would perish together, and man would return to dust. If you have understanding, hear this. Listen to the sound of my words. Should one who hates justice govern? Will you condemn him who is most just? Is it fitting to say to a king, you are worthless? And to nobles, you are wicked. Yet he is not partial to princes, nor does he regard the rich more than the poor, for they are all the work of his hands. In a moment they die, in the middle of the night. The people are shaken and pass away. The mighty are taken away without a hand. <clears throat> For his eyes are on the ways of man, and he sees all his steps. There is no darkness, no shadow of death, where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. For he need not further consider a man, that he should go before God in judgment. He breaks in pieces mighty men without inquiry and sets others in their place. Therefore, he knows their works. He overthrows them in the night and they are crushed. He strikes them as wicked men in the open sight of others because they turned their back from him and would not consider any of his ways so that they caused the cry of the poor to come to him, <clears throat> for he hears the cry of the afflicted. When he gives quietness, who then can make trouble? And when he hides his face, who then can see him? Whether it is against a nation or a man alone, that the hypocrite should not reign, lest the people be ensnared. Ooh, boy, that's a potent line, isn't it? That the hypocrite should not reign, lest the people be ensnared. For has anyone said to God, I have borne chastening, I will offend no more. Teach me what I do not see. If I have done iniquity, I, I will do it no more. Is that what they would say? If I've done iniquity, I will do it no more. Should he repay it according to your terms? Just because you disavow it? You must choose and not I. Therefore, speak what you know. Men of understanding say to me, Wise men who listen to me. Job speaks without knowledge. His words are without wisdom. Oh, that Job were tried to the utmost because his answers are like those of wicked men. For he adds rebellion to his sins. He claps his hands among us and multiplies his words against God. <clears throat> That's what this young man has to say. We move along to chapter 35. And moreover, Elihu answered and said, Do you think this is right? Do you say, My righteousness is more than God's? For you say, What advantage will it be to you? What profit shall I have more than if I had sinned? 
I will answer you and your companions with you. Look to the heavens and see. And behold the clouds, they are higher than you. If you sin, what do you accomplish against him? Or if your transgressions are multiplied, what do you do to him? If you are righteous, what do you give him? Or what does he receive from your hand? Your wickedness affects a man such as you, and your righteousness a son of man. Because of the multitude of oppressions, they cry out. They cry out for help because of the arm of the Almighty. But no one says, where is God my maker, who gives songs in the night, who teaches us more than the beasts of the earth and makes us wiser than the birds of heaven? There they cry out, but he does not answer <clears throat> because of the pride of evil men. Surely God will not listen to empty talk, nor will the Almighty regard it, although you say you do not see him. Yet justice is before him, and you must wait for him. And now, because he has not punished in his anger, nor taken much notice of folly. Therefore Job opens his mouth in vain. He multiplies words without knowledge. And Job is just sitting there very quietly. We don't read an answer. We move along to chapter 36. Elihu also proceeded and said, Bear with me a little, and I will show you that there are yet words to speak on God's behalf. I will fetch my knowledge from afar. I will ascribe righteousness to my maker, for truly my words are not false. One who is perfect in knowledge is with you. Okay. Behold, God is mighty but despises no one. He is mighty in strength of understanding. He does not preserve the life of the wicked, but gives justice to the oppressed. He does not withdraw his eyes from the righteous, but they are on the throne with kings. For he has seated them forever, and they are exalted. And if they are bound in fetters, held in the cords of affliction. Then he tells them their work and their transgressions, that they have acted defiantly. <clears throat> he also opens their ear to instruction and commands that they turn from iniquity. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. But if they do not obey, they shall perish by the sword, and they shall die without knowledge. But the hypocrites in heart store up wrath. They do not cry for help when he binds them. They die in youth, and their life ends among the perverted persons. He delivers the poor in their affliction and opens their ears in oppression. Indeed, he would have brought you out of dire distress into a broad place where there is no restraint. And what is set on your table would be full of richness. But you are filled with the judgment due the wicked. Judgment and justice take hold of you because there is wrath. Beware lest he take you away with one blow. For a large ransom would not help you avoid it. Will your riches, 
or all the mighty forces keep you from distress? Do not desire the night when people are cut off in their place. Take heed. Do not turn to iniquity, for you have chosen this rather than affliction. Behold, God is exalted by his power, who teaches like him, who has assigned him his way, or who has said, <clears throat> you have done wrong. Remember to magnify his work of which men have sung. Everyone has seen it. Man looks on it from afar. Behold, God is great, and we do not know him, nor can the number of his years be discovered. For he draws up drops of water, which distill as rain from the midst, which the clouds drop down and pour abundantly on man. Indeed, can anyone understand the spreading of clouds, the thunder from his canopy? Look, he scatters his light upon it and covers the depths of the sea. For by these he judges the peoples. He gives food in abundance. He covers his hands with lightning and commands it to strike. His thunder declares it. The cattle also concerning the rising storm. Wow. How about all that? I pray you go back and read it for yourself. Let Holy Spirit speak with you. We move right along now to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Oh, this is so rich and wonderful. You are going to love this this morning. Paul says, therefore... Since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, <clears throat> not walking in craftiness or handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us, not of us. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the life of dying of the Lord Jesus, 
that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then, death is working in us, but life in you. Oh, <clears throat> if you reread and just kind of go slow and take that all apart, oh, what words of encouragement and yet words of reality. I mean, we have our times. These are times of being perplexed, persecuted, struck down. But we're not in despair. We're not forsaken. We are not destroyed. <clears throat> but we just keep on carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Ooh, woo! Those are powerful words, y'all. Powerful. All right, <clears throat> we move right along to Psalm 44. Psalm 44, this is another contemplation of the sons of Korah. And these words were given to the chief musician for him to work out a melody. Mm. We're going to hear all that in heaven. We have heard with our ears, O oh God. Our fathers have told us the deeds you did in their days. In days of old, you drove out the nations with your hand. But them, his people, you planted you afflicted the peoples and cast them out, for they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword, nor did their own arm <clears throat> save them. But it was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance, because you favored them. <clears throat> you are my king, O oh God. Command victories for Jacob. Through you we will push down our enemies. Through your name we will trample those who rise up against us. For I will not trust in my bow, nor shall my sword save me. But you have saved us from our enemies and have put to shame those who hated us. In God we boast all day long and praise your name forever. Selah. Contemplate. Stop. Stop and let those words go over. Scott tells us <clears throat> they used to just lie right down flat on their faces. They just would stop. Contemplate. All right, Connie's already gone ahead and put that the proverb on there for you. Proverbs 22, verses 10 through 12. This is what we will close up today's wonderful reading. Proverbs 22, 10 through 12. Hmm. <laughs> Good words for today. Cast out the scoffer, and contention will leave. Yes, strife and reproach will cease. He who loves purity of heart and has grace on his lips, the king will be his friend. The eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge, but he overthrows the words of the faithless. So there are a lot of words being spoken today. <clears throat> Just hang on and hang in because all of the words that God judges as faithless from faithless people, he's going to overthrow them 
It might look like those words are winning at the moment, but they, they might win a battle or two, but they won't win the war. They won't win the war. Mm-mm. Just hang in there with God's word. I mean, y'all, 25 minutes. Look what God has given us in 25 minutes. Some of the old, some of the new, a psalm, a proverb, a well-balanced spiritual meal. It's well worth your commitment to start your day, whether it's with us or whether it's by yourself or with some other people, however it happens. But cling to that. Hang on to that. These are tough days. Hang on to starting the day with God's word. It will firm up your foundation. It will help you later in the day when maybe all kinds of stuff happens that you weren't planning on and you could have yourself a royal fit. You can hang on to these wonderful words and you will be victorious. Others might fall. What is the psalm? A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000, but it shall not come near you. So I encourage you. You encourage me. I want you to know that. You encourage me. I mean, I tell you, it gets me up knowing, whoop, what time is it? Get up, get showered, get dressed, fix your hair best you can. Do what you can. Because at 7 a.m., you have a commitment. And there will be others you know, God has been faithful, hasn't he? He has been faithful. I mean, Kathy and I figure, I don't know, we're all still trying to figure it out. How many years? Six years, I think, I've been doing this. Very, very few times I have not been here at 7 a.m. One time I know of, we had to be in the, we had to be in the hospital because Sam was going to have his eye operated on. And I mean, I, my stomach was not only churning for all that, but it was churning because, man, you took my 7 a.m. away from me, you medical people. But I recorded it the night before. That one I knew about, so I prepared for that one. All right, enough gab. Just want you to know how much I love you. I want you to know that I look at all your names. I go back afterwards because I'm busy reading. And I, if you've put a prayer request down, that's very important to me. I pray about it. All of your names, may I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May his face shine upon you today. May his face shine upon you today. I bless you for your faithfulness to him for your faithfulness to his word not to me to his word I'm just a reader my heart is to get people that will maybe fall upon us and join us who are they're Christians but they're uninspired to read the Word of God. If they were honest, they would say, I haven't opened up my Bible in months or whatever. A lot of people could say, I've never read the whole Bible. We are reading the whole Bible. A bit, a bit, a bit, line upon line, precept upon precept, on a daily, easy to do way. Invite your friends. Speak to those who you know they're struggling and maybe the reason is they are not filling themselves with the Word of God on a regular basis. And they don't realize how dry and empty they are. And so they're trying to do it on their own, aren't they? They don't need to do that. They don't need to do that. God 
God, Holy Spirit, will bless them. So I encourage you, let's all reach out. The, time, the day is short. We don't know when Jesus is coming. The days are getting more evil. But we are walking in righteousness. We are walking in victory. So now, let's have victory and walk in prayer. Okay? Hallelujah. Father God, we do come before you. We come humbly, Lord, and we come grateful. We are grateful. I am so grateful for your word. Oh, in my older years, how scary it could be, how empty it could be without you, without your word, without the joy of the Lord. But I feel full. I'm enjoying every day. Not as an old person. I feel like a young person. You are renewing. You are renewing my mind and my strength in you. In many ways, I'm much stronger today than I w when I was young. Much stronger. Much healthier. And it's all because of you. I tried in my own, Lord. Your sons and daughters who are here, they could tell their own story. They tried on their own. And they are all so grateful, so grateful that you came and you rescued them and you saved them. You gave them a brand new life. You put joy in their life. You've put all that they need to walk victoriously. So, well, Lord, we're here to praise you over it. Thank you for it. We're here, Lord, to lift up Israel. We're here to lift up Jerusalem, your precious, precious city. The city that will one day be the capital of the whole world for eternity. And you will be there. You will rule and reign from there. And right now, Lord, we have these hard scriptures starting to happen. And would you believe a suggestion right from America that we divide Jerusalem? Precious God, we are horrified. We pray to you, Lord. We pray. You said pray for the peace of Jerusalem. When there's peace, things aren't divided. Things are in unity. And so, Father, we pray this day on a daily basis for the peace. Sha'alu shalom Yerushalayim. My precious friend Zola Lovett used to say on our trip, he's up there praising you now. And we would pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We do right now, Lord. And we're sincere. We mean it. We are asking that Jerusalem, all her people, have peace. Have peace, Lord. First thing I watched this morning was a joyful bar mitzvah at the Western Mall. I've put it on my site for you to see. Lord, a joyful bar mitzvah. This young man just so excited. Reading Torah. Putting their phylacteries on. Praising you, worshiping you, following you as best they know how. Oh, precious Lord, you are doing a great work today. You are bringing your people home to Jerusalem. You are bringing them home from every country, every language, every tribe, every kind of dress. Oh, Father God, I, I, I remember being there for Pentecost. And on Pentecost, they all go and they dress in their native costumes. The Russians are dressed like Russians and the Africans dress like Africans. And it's a great view of the whole culture of all the worlds there at your wall. Lord, we bless you for this. We give you praise and honor and glory. You are awesome, Lord. You are truly awesome. Hallelujah to the Lamb. 
Hallelujah to the Lamb. Father God, we hold up America to you. And I'd ask, precious God, that you would be so evident today in every way, evident with the unbelieving, with the disobedient, and evident with your believers, your people who desire to be obedient. Precious Lord, precious God, we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you that your spirit is everywhere. You are everywhere in the whole world all at one time. You are the only God. You are the only one. You, Holy Spirit, are the only one. No other false religion has a Holy Spirit who's everywhere, present for everyone, helping them, comforting them. Father God, I ask that these precious families be comforted in their loss of their sweet Marine. Father God, Father God, please, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, please comfort them. Comfort them. Protect our soldiers, Lord. Protect the innocent people of Afghanistan and all of the other troubled areas of the world. Father God, we'd ask that many, many would come to know you today, that this would be the grand and glorious salvation day of so many lost people. Let them receive you in their hearts this day and begin the new path of life. Precious Lord, precious Lord, so many issues, so many people, so many things to pray for. Lord, I hold up my, my precious sister in Christ, lowly, fighting a battle in the, in the hospital. I'm asking, Lord, that you strengthen her Strengthen her. Strengthen her lungs, her oxygen capacity. Raise her up, Lord. Raise her up, a healed testimony unto you. Father God, your sons and daughters who are joined in here right now are, are holding up to you and in, in naming people and and relatives and friends and situations and national situations, international situations, end time situations, global situations. Lord, we pray. We pray for our enemy. We pray for those who hate us. We lift them up to you, Lord. And we say, precious Lord, Speak to their hearts today. Draw them. Draw all who would come to you today. You are no respecter of persons. And so, Lord, we trust and we believe that out of our prayers will come many answers, many salvations, many healings, many deliverances. Father, bring so many out of alcoholism, out of drug abuse. Lord, we'd ask that you would somehow stop these drugs coming over our border. Oh, I call down a legion of angels to stand at our southern border, to be there, to turn people back, to change their hearts as they cross over, to take those who intended to come and do evil, and Lord, bring them to you for salvation. Let them find out that they crossed the border to find out their Lord and their Savior, Jesus, loves them. Father, let there be people right there to witness to them, to pray with them, to help them. Lord, we must, you are the answer. You are the answer to the border, 
to Afghanistan, to anything you want to name, we know you are the answer. So I ask, Lord, for a blessing upon your people today, a blessing upon those who are distressed like we read, cast down. They are burdened. Lord, let our praying be seeds of salvation in them, in their soul, in their heart, in their mind, in their spirit. And Lord, we'd ask that that would be watered and tended until it's blooming in a full spirit-filled life walking with you. And all God's people went ahead with their prayers, cried hearty amens, cried hallelujah, cry hallelujah all day long. We will praise and bless him. I love you all so much. Bye-bye.